Welcome back. Now that we've created the Databricks cluster and the Databricks service in our Azure portal, let's mount the data lake storage in order for Databricks to be able to access our data. So it involves a couple of steps. So firstly, we need to create an Azure service principle and then we need to grant access for our data lake storage to the service principle. So that means the service principle has got access to our storage and then we mount the storage account in Databricks via the service principle. So, effectively what that means is now the Databricks workspace will have the same permissions as the service principle to our storage account so you can access our storage account. So let's switch over to the Azure portal and get started. First we'll create the service principle. From the Azure portal, we can click here on the top left and then select Microsoft Intra ID here. That will be in your favorites by default normally, but if you don't find it there, you can type in Microsoft Intra ID here and then you can click on that. So from here you need to click on App Registrations to create a service principle and click on New Registration. We are going to create a new one and let's call this one as SP COVID Reporting App. And you can leave this as default, so that is with a single tenant. And then you can leave this redirect URI which is optional as default as well. Click Register now. Okay, the app's now being created, so we need to note down a couple of information from here. So we need the application ID when we go to mount our storage account, and also we need the directory ID. So let's copy this. So I'm going to copy that into clipboard and then put it into my text editor. So that would go in the application ID, and I want the directory ID as well. So I'm going to put it in here. And the next thing we need to do is we need to get a secret. So let's click on Certification Secrets here and then click New Client Secret. And you can just leave that as a secret created and that can expire in a year or whatever we want to do. And then click Add. The one thing to remember is you need to copy this value here. When you come back, you won't be able to see it again, so make sure you copy that and put that secret in here. And with that, we've created our service principle. Next, let's grant access for our data lake to this service principle. So let's go back to our dashboard and we should see a data lake, that's data lake COVID reporting DL. Click on that. And then now go to IAM, which is access control. And then you can add a new role assignment. So the role we want to choose is storage blob contributor. So that should be, yeah that's the one, storage blob data contributor. And we want to give access to our app. So that would be SP COVID reporting app. So that's the one we just created. So let's give access for that and then click save. So that's the second step done and the third step is to mount the storage account which is the COVID reporting DL in our Databricks cluster. So let's head over to the Databricks workspace and we can start mounting our storage account. So from here, you come to workspace. Initially you might see the users listed here but what I want to do is I want to create a folder called COVID and then put all our work in inside that rather than under the user folders. In order to do that, as you can see here, the arrow, click on that, you go back and then I'm going to create my folder in this space. So click on the space and then click create and folder. And that's going to be called COVID. And under that I'm going to have under the folder for the setup activity. So this is going to be called setup. And that's my folder. And this is where we want to upload our Python notebook to do the setup. So the Python notebook itself is included as part of the course. So let's import that. So that's going to be in my local folder. I copied that under notebooks and that is the mount underscore storage dot py script. So click open and click on import. Once you've done, once you've imported it if you want to navigate around. And then you will come back to this actually if you if you click on setup and then mount storage. So that is your Python notebook. So before we do anything let me quickly walk you through this Python script. So this is going to basically help you mount the containers raw, processed and lookup in our data lake storage. If you remember from our storage account, let me show you that. We had three containers, one containing the raw data. So this is the data we are going to deal with. 
So that's our raw population data. And then we were going to put everything into the processed folder once we processed it. And we were going to use the dim date from our lookup table. So we need to mount all of these three containers so that we can use them within our transformation scripts. So let me switch back again to our Python script. So that's what this is going to help you. As we said before, we need the application ID, directory ID for the app that we created, and also the secret we created as well. So we've got them in our text pad. So we need to replace that in here. So we got the application ID, secret credential, and then the directory ID, and then we need to execute all of these commands to do that. So let's do that one by one. So I'm going to get the application ID from my text pad. So that is that one. And let's do it here. And then we need the directory ID. So that goes in here. And the last one is, we need our secret. So that is going to go in here. So one thing to remember is we have put our secrets in here in plain text. This is not a standard practice. We normally tend to keep them within keyword and then use the keyword secrets in here. But it's okay just for demo purposes. So let's, let's execute. So you've got two options here to execute this command. Either you can do shift and then enter as a shortcut or you can just click on this run cell command here. So let me do that. So that will be just to run this cell. Okay, so it's asking me to attach to our cluster that we created. I can click attach and run here, or I'll show you. So, here you attach the cluster make sure that your cluster is running. If it's not running, go and start the cluster as well. So let me attach the compute to the notebook and then I'm going to click on run shell or you can press shift enter to execute it. While it is running let's provide the configuration to the next cell. That is to mount our raw container. Again, update the storage account name before executing. So this is, in our case, actually this is the COVID reporting LUNT ADFDL, but if you had a different name for us for your storage account make sure you follow that as well. So that would be in here as well as in here. So I've updated both places. Now, if you click on the run or if you just do shift enter, that will execute them. After executing the previous one. But it throws error as we did a mistake. And the mistake is we have put space while copying and pasting in the previous cell. So let's remove the space to fix it. Now run it again. And this time it ran successfully. Now again go back to mount container cell. Run it again using shift plus enter and let's hope this time it will run successfully. And this time it indeed ran successfully. So let's now do this one which is for the process container. Again, let's replace our storage account names here. So the last one we want to do is this one here. So let's do that. Now run both the cell one by one. Okay, so that's completed as well. So now both the containers is now mounted as well. Let's make sure actually our mounts are working as expected. So let me list the folders within our mount for lookup. So that'll do that. So as you can see actually it's listed dim country and dim date. Similarly, you can do for your raw and processed. Let's do that just to make sure they are all okay as well. Raw seemed okay, and the process should have the ECDC folder within that one. So you've got the ECDC folder within that. So we've successfully mounted all three of our containers. So with that actually we don't really need this compute anymore because when we come to do our transformation we are going to be invoking the transformation from our data factory, which will spin up a job compute and then execute our transformations in that. So we don't really need the interactive compute anymore. So if you want to save some money you can head over to the computes tab here and then you can delete the compute. So you select that compute and then you can delete it. It's as simple as that. So the compute is now being removed. So that's the end of this lesson. I'll see you in the next one.